Ava, why aren't you eating it out by yourself? Mm. <laughs> Did you ask Turin to help you eat it? Is he the best big brother ever? Good morning from the Bingham family. Oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Justin and I both got our workout in separately because someday we're gonna work out together, but we're just not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. It's pretty much impossible because when I get home from the gym, she then goes to the gym, I help get the kids ready, or on my off days, I work out here at the house, so she goes to the gym first. Uh-oh, the hair bands are missing. Uh-oh, uh -oh. hair bands are missing. Ava is having a great morning this morning. She's mad at dad because dad won't take her to dance. It's not like dad won't take her to dance. Dad just needs to go to work. <laughs> Ava, are you mad at dad? She loves her daddy, huh? Don't be mad at me, please. Ava. <laughs> <laughs> so Ava and I are gonna head to dance without dad. <laughs> And then we are going to go to Costco. Costco. See if they have any toilet paper or any water bottles. Hang on. Hang I almost on, kind of feel on. like. <laughs> and it was feeling left out. Come here. Come on. <laughs> come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're feeling left out. I get it. I can see you looking at the camera. Oh, there. you're so sweet. I actually think it might be a little bit embarrassing walking out of Costco with toilet paper and water bottles, but I happen to need both. Not like a stocking up for the coronavirus type situation. I just honestly need both. But guys, if the coronavirus becomes a true epidemic, well, we are going to pack up the house, pack the tent trailer, and head to the hills. <laughs> and we will live in the mountains, which has truly been my childhood dream. <laughs> I would live in the mountains with no electricity and no food, if Lindsay would permit me to do so. That sounds like torture. He definitely could survive in the wilderness by himself and have a lot of fun doing it. For at least 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got crazy hair today, huh? All right, so dad's going, off to work oh. and we're off to dance and we will see you at Costco. All right, Ava and I just got to Costco and I have been watching person after person coming through the checkout line with tons of toilet paper and tons of water bottles. It's really a thing, this is funny. Okay, Costco opened about an hour and 15 minutes ago and I've been told that it is sold out within the first two hours. So we're gonna go take our chances and see if we can get some. I really just do need some. I'm not gonna stock up, because if I was gonna stock up on water, I would just buy gallons of water. This is where I buy my toilet paper anyway. Guys, pray for us. Mom, that's inappropriate. What's inappropriate? Toilet paper. <laughs> Some toe. <laughs> Ava, hurry. Fight someone. Go get it. No. I'm just teasing. Okay. They've actually got quite a bit left, but it is going fast like hotcakes. Nice work. Can you get us a second one? Yeah. All right, we've got two things of toilet paper. I'm guessing these were stacked super high, and they are definitely getting low. Just water bottles for days. Decent amount of water bottles, actually. As you can see, they have an item limit, five cases of water and three toilet paper per member. Can you get it? I think that weighs more than you do. There is mommy. We did it. I kind of feel like I'm part of a club now, like a water toilet paper club. I'm part of it. We're all just walking in a line, just casually buying out the store in toilet paper and water bottles. NBD. Ava, look. Somebody is stashing toilet paper. Not only are they filling their cart, they're saving some in a hiding spot for later. By the plates. Real sneaky, guys. Real sneaky. It's getting lower. Now we're getting serious. Got about eight cases in that one. They're making pancakes. Yeah. Huh? Apricot. I meant like good hot, like warm. They look delicious. Mm. It's like a peach pie. 
We're taste testing over here. We've got apricot syrup, forest berry syrup, and raspberry. Which one's your favorite so far? I don't know yet. Don't know yet? Yeah. Oh. Apricot? No. Yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, this one's apricot. Well, I have to eat them all. So you're not sure yet? Still deciding? No. We we'll have to eat them all. They've also got a limit on baby wipes. Those are almost baby gone. <laughs> when we run out of food, then we can't go anywhere. Everyone's eating all the Costco food. There's nothing left. They're taking all of it. They're eating all their food. Well, kind of not all of it. All right, we went and did some other shopping. It's been 30 minutes, and what happened? The toilet paper is gone! <laughs> the toilet paper is completely gone. You want toilet paper? You're just gonna have to figure something else out. There is still a very fair amount of water bottles. Still going strong on the water bottle section. The toilet paper is gone. Someone was right about the first two hours of Costco being open and it's gone. I'm mostly sad because I was really entertained by watching every cart go by me with toilet paper and water bottles in it. The weather right now is incredible. So nice out, we can feel spring is coming, summer is on its way. So, Landon and I decided to take a little bike ride. Ashy's playing with friends, Ava's playing with friends, Turin's at a friend's house. So I am on a walk with Annabelle and Landon. Landon is riding his two-wheeler that he has his big fat wheels on. They're like huge training wheels that stabilize his bike for him. And we are enjoying this amazing sunshine. everybody so guys one thing my dad did for me in fact Papa Bingham if you're watching this huge shout out to you my friend so he did it was more monthly interviews with each kid I remember going to the backyard and sitting down with my dad and just hanging out for really as long as it took and my dad would just sit there and just talk to us it was kind of just a little one-on-one -on -one kind of personal interview with him to just kind of download what's going on in our lives and you know just just kind of build a strong relationship. And as our kids have gotten older, that's become something I have wanted to start practicing because I feel like, you know, they can have a little bit deeper conversations now about life and struggles of life, things like that. So you guys all know that we, you know, try to do a little one-on-one -on -one date with each of our kids, things like that. Tonight, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna take Landon out and we probably won't vlog it, but I wanna take Landon out and just have a little chat with him because he, Seems to be struggling a little bit lately. You know, you guys have seen some of the past videos where I think his situation is a bit frustrating. And as he gets older, I think the consciousness of that is becoming more and more real for him. And and so I think it's uh, a time for us as parents to kind of step in and, and act as therapists to a certain extent and kind of help this little man out. So tonight's my turn to go sit down and have a little interview with my precious nine-year-old little boy. So I'm gonna do that while the rest of the kids and Lindsay hang out here for the, for the next little bit. Ready to go chat? Yeah. Let's do it, buddy. Tonight we are having some chicken noodle soup for dinner. And Turin just came home from playing with friends with a pounding headache. And we're not sure if he's dehydrated. He's a little worried he has the coronavirus. I'm pretty confident he doesn't. <laughs> but I guess right now with how much it's spreading everywhere, you never know. But the good news is if you have the coronavirus, I have toilet paper and water bottles. Have you heard that everybody's buying that everywhere? Yep. Guess what I went to Costco today? And I got two cases of both. Just got there at the beginning. And they ran out of toilet paper. They ran out of toilet paper, mm -hmm. like 45 minutes after we got there. So my friend at school said his mom had to go to a gas station to get toilet paper rolls, and it was like three rolls per guest. So first his mom went in, then his dad went in, then his brother came, went in at different times so they could buy like more than three. That's a good plan. You gotta plan. do what you gotta do. Yep. Like your dad and you and him and then you get a babysitter, they grab them, and then they go get some toilet paper. <laughs> Ava, why aren't you eating it all by yourself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you ask Turin to help you eat it? 
Is he the best big brother ever? Aww. All right, dad's home. He's enjoying some chicken noodle soup. Didn't really leave any for the rest of us. My goodness, there's an entire <laughs> pot. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you about this chicken noodle soup because it is a family recipe. It's almost gone, but this is a recipe of my dad's and it is the most amazing soup. It has such incredible flavor. It really does. Right? Just soothes the soul. Definitely soothes the soul. I don't know why I made it today because it's like the nicest day it's been in a really long time. But normally my dad boils an entire chicken and then pulls all the chicken off because it gives it more flavor. I did a shortcut today. I bought one of those packages of the rotisserie chicken that are already pulled off. So it's just a big package of the rotisserie chicken. So easy. So I just throw it in there, throw it in the soup. So I basically just have to chop up the vegetables and add all the spices. Easiest dinner ever and it is amazing. I'm going to have to share that recipe with you guys because it is a recipe that needs to be shared. It's the spices. It is for sure the spices and the seasonings that make it so delicious. So I just got back a little while ago, you know, from having my little interview with Lana, which honestly was just a ton of fun, just to hear him kind of just offload some of the things that are frustrated with him, and he cried. You know, it was really, it's really tough, honestly. I, as I kind of drove to, we drove to this little park, and as I kind of drove, I, I honestly just kind of said a little prayer in my head and said, hey, you know, help me have the words, you know, to, to, to offer, because I just knew he was going to kind of just vent and, and talk about some of the challenges that he has. It was a really good bonding experience. We sat there for maybe 30 minutes, looked at the sunset in our new van, and uh, we just talked. And he kind of cried and said the things that were kind of frustrating to him. Some of it just, you know, just being a kid, adolescence, and not a lot of it tied to cerebral palsy specifically. but. Some, for sure, little things like not being able to write very well or be able to type on his computer in his computer class and things like that. The underlying principle that I you know, wanted him to get out of it was to be positive. Everyone has something in life that they can complain about, they can murmur about, everybody. We all have something that brings us down. And I think Landon's is maybe a little bit more outward facing to others. And so if he can be a positive person, people will look at that and say, wow, that kid, look at him, look how positive he is. And he has a condition that, you know, to others might be very, you know, they might consider it severe, but to him, he's just turned what others might think is, is something challenging, which it is, into something that's positive. And that's what I told him. I said, you know, have a positive attitude despite how hard it might seem. We all have hard things and you're you're totally allowed and justified in having these moments today in the car. But learn to appreciate that challenges make us stronger and that just like going to the gym and working out, getting stronger is a painful process. You have to lift heavier weight. You have to you know, stretch and things of that nature, that's painful. And just like challenges of life, they're painful, but at the end, they make you stronger. And so I just told him, have a positive attitude throughout that process. And at the end, it'll become second nature for him to be positive. He'll teach others to, you know, smile in the face of adversity. He'll teach others to smile in the face of life's challenges, because at the end of the day, life's not fair. And that's okay, it's just life. But if there's one thing Lindsay and I can teach our kids, they may not always be in control of their circumstances, but they're always in control of their attitude. And Landon, you know, he, he's not in control of the circumstance of having cerebral palsy, but he certainly is in control of his attitude. And so that was kind of the overarching message for this evening. And it was just fun to be able to hear him kind of offload some of the things that uh, are frustrating and concerning to him and turn it around and, and say, hey dad, I'm gonna work on, on, on being more positive. So anyway, I thought that was a good way to wrap up today's video. It's just giving you guys kind of a quick download on how that went. So all you parents out there, I encourage you to have those one-on-one -on -one moments with your kids. Uh, they're priceless moments. You know, kids grow up really fast and I really appreciated my parents who did that with me as I was growing up. So anyway guys, we will see you in the morning. We've got a pretty exciting uh, weekend, which we're really excited to, uh, to share with you guys. So if you have not, subscribe down below. We are almost to 50,000 followers. I cannot believe it. It is incredible. You guys are amazing. In a short little six months we've been doing this, it's incredible to see uh, you know, Landon's story kind of spread in our journey as a family in Holland, if you will. If you're new here, we upload daily. So hit that notification bell and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow.